I love Psalm 84. It's a truly honest reflection on how much God means to the psalmist. And I can definitely resonate with parts of the passage as I spend more time with God. I long, yes I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord with my whole being, body and soul. That's from verse 3. And a single day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere else, so I'm anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live the good life in the home of the wicked. And that's verse 10. I wanted to talk about this idea of living from rest today. It's something that I really believe God has used this time of the pandemic to show us, to help us realise we were not created for the busyness of what our lives have become. We were created for rest. Rest in God, in his perfect peace and in his love. Creation revolves around rest. God built rest into our rhythm of life because he knows how much we need it. God's resting on the seventh day of the creation story speaks volumes to me about how I should rest. If God in all his strength and power and glory chose to rest, there must be something in that, don't you think? By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. That's Genesis 2, verses 2 to 3. In the other one of our readings, Luke 10, we see how much Mary understands this idea of resting in God and carries that same longing that the psalmist had as he wrote Psalm 84. It's quite a popular story, one you've probably heard before. We all like to think that we'd be the Mary in the situation, don't we? But really, we know that we're more of the Martha and would be the first to complain to Jesus about our seemingly lazy counterpart. I think there's an important distinction between laziness and resting. Resting is a very active thing. We're making an active decision to become aware of the presence of God, to receive all he offers us and wait on his word. Mary was learning from the rabbi, making most of having him come to meet her. I'm sure she went away a changed person, more aware of who Jesus is. And that's the joy that we get in spending time with God and actively seeking him. He brings new revelation of who he is, giving us even more reason to stay there with him, worshipping before him. Culturally, Martha is in the right in the story. It was a woman's role to do the jobs, to provide hospitality, especially to the Son of God. Women were forbidden from learning from a rabbi as a disciple. But if you know Jesus, you know he's not the kind of guy to follow those cultural norms. He wanted Mary to learn from him and listen to him, to know him and to love him. I wonder if anyone of you feel like maybe you're not deserving of spending time with him, that you shouldn't be allowed to do that for certain things you've done or said. But I'd encourage you now, if you do feel like that, if you feel a bit distanced from God because of what you've done, he wants to spend time with you. He doesn't care what you've done or you said. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to forgive you and pour his grace upon you so you can spend time with him. He knows how glorious his presence is and understands your longing for it. So in his loving kindness, he welcomes you in. He loves you and wants to know you. When I was reading these passages, I was reminded of the picture that Nikki has shared with us concerning the future of the church. The picture was of a reptile. I love this picture and have been thinking and praying over it. I feel like it's fit so well into this idea of resting. I think God wants us to get our priorities right to set our firm foundations in him, as individuals and as a community. I think it's important to do this in this time before we start to embrace the new skin and the next steps of this church that we're praying about. The foundation being God's presence 
It's about basking in the warmth of God's glory and going back to our purpose here on earth, to rest in God and to worship him. If our next steps as a church and as individuals are not fuelled by our time in the presence of God, we're going to burn out and lose passion and vision very quickly. In this time we need to set our foundation strong and build a rhythm of rest into our lives that accommodates the returning of what we might call normal life as we look into the future. If we focus our time on enjoying the glorious presence of God, we will be ready for anything. We'll always be learning and growing in our faith. But if, as restrictions lessen and slightly more normal life returns, we focus on doing, doing things as much as we can, we'll lose sight of why we started and we'll become fruitless and we'll miss out the opportunity of a lifetime that God offers us to know him and be known by him, to love him and be loved by him. And I'm sure you might be sat there thinking, it's all well and good saying this, but how do I rest in God's presence? How do I make time? Even in COVID times, it can feel like your life is still quite busy, whether you're looking after other people, whether you're a key worker, or whether just all the uncertainty is causing you to feel very unproductive in things that you're doing. I'd encourage you that it's a personal thing. I think there's no perfect way to do it. There's no perfect words to say. It's not a magic trick that you can get to do if you say these words. It's a relationship. It's something that you build and you build it by doing it, by spending time with him. A great start would just be making some time every day, whether that be two hours or two minutes spending time resting in God and focusing yourself upon him and spending time in his word. Make it regular as well, at the same time every day or split up throughout the day, at morning and at night. And don't lose heart. I know sometimes it can feel like God's a bit absent in your time and you're speaking into the silence with no response, but God promises he will meet there with you and he takes joy in it. It's not an obligation for him. He chooses to do so in his love for us. I'm going to give you some time now to rest in God's presence. I'm going to play a song. It's called Most Beautiful and it's by Maverick City Music. I've got a video to go along with it as well. So feel free to just watch and spend this time as you wish in God's presence. If the music is more distracting to you than helpful, feel free to just mute the sound for a moment and turn that down and just watch the videos. I'm just gonna pray now as we spend this time that we might meet with God in this time as you listen, as you let's just spend time in him, marveling at his glory and all that he is. Yes, Lord, would your presence consume us? Would your love pull us in as we come before you? As children in our Father's arms, to know you and be known by you. Amen.